The Tao of Self-Confidence, Episode 301. Welcome to the Tao of Self-Confidence, where I share stories of amazing women who have discovered their inner journey to self-confidence. Visit our website at thetaoofselfconfidence.com. Your inner journey to self-confidence awaits. Well, hello, friend. Welcome to the Tao of Self-Confidence, where I share stories of amazing women who have discovered their inner journey to self-confidence. I'm your host today, Sheena Yap Chan, and today I have a phenomenal lady on the show today. She is a growth strategist that focuses both on personal and business, and I'm really just excited to have her on and share her story with us. So without further ado, I'm going to introduce you to Edna Sangel. Edna, how are you today? Maybe you can fill in a little bit more about yourself to the listeners. Sure. I'm a growth strategist. And basically, my experience, I guess, in my life and my career has been personal development and business development. And my background is I've worked across various industries for the past 14 to 15 years, um, helping businesses, both small, midsize and large businesses to grow their revenue. But I also do a lot of personal development for a lot of women and entrepreneurs, and I guess you would say millennials. And so that's a little bit about my background, but I I have a various experience across many things. So multiple hats, I guess that makes sense. Totally. Thanks for sharing that, Edna. And what would be your cultural background? Sure. I'm I'm from Hawaii. And my background is I'm a little bit of a mutt like everybody <laughs> seems like in from Hawaii. I'm an Asian Hispanic Pacific Islander. So I do have Filipino blood, Spanish blood, Thai, Chinese, Japanese, and also Spanish. And so I guess I'm mixed. <laughs> awesome. Well, thanks for sharing that. And Edna, what would be your favorite self-confidence quote? Sure. This is one that I actually came up with myself. I'm actually an author as well. And one of the things that I I love about darkness is it really brings out who you are. So my quote is, you find your strength in your darkest hour. It was created for you so you can find your light. I love that quote. And it's so true, right? You know, when some people feel like there's no light at the end of the tunnel, there really is. And sometimes, you know, we go through a lot of dark times and it's Learning how to come out of it and see the light and just learn to keep going is what makes us stronger and have that confidence within us. So, you know, it's a really great quote that you created. And yeah, so thanks for sharing that. And, you know, in your own words, how would you define self-confidence? I think self-confidence is the ability to still believe that you are what God says you are. I'm a, a woman of faith and, you know, we face so many challenges in life that have to have that confidence that regardless of what's going on around you, regardless of all the setbacks and trials and tribulations you go through, heartaches, you know, troubles and such, but you're for le- relentless enough to keep going in spite of the storm that you're facing and whatever setbacks you may encounter. Um, this is when you see if you really are what you say you are. Easy for people to be confident, you know, when everything is going well, but it, when all hell breaks loose, this is when the true you comes out. And so self-confidence is being able to know that whatever, regardless of whatever is happening, you got this. Thanks for that definition. And so true, right? Confidence is not always just through the good times. You know, we all go through bad, good and bad times, but it's learning how to pick ourselves up regardless of the situation. That's when we can become confident. And it doesn't have to mean like you shout out to the world that you're confident. It's just having that strength to just keep going and keep fighting for what you believe in. So love the definition. And Edna, what was your life like before your discovery of self-confidence? You know, I thought self-confidence was all about what you see on the external, meaning, you know, what it what it looks like on the outside that you have everything all together. It's like the facade of a perfect life, you know, great career, great health, you know, perfect marriage, all that good stuff, you know? So when I experienced a lot of hurdles and struggles in life, you know, I thought to myself and no one's ever going to listen to me because of the experience that I've had. So I, I wanted to make an impact in people's lives, but because of what I thought, you needed to be or the facade of what you needed to have in order for people to listen to you. I never thought I would have that platform. You know, it's just a little bit of my background. This is me being transparent. You know, I've been through rape. I've got through a divorce. You know, I had, you know, went through emotional and, you know, unfortunately physical abuse and I was robbed and my anxiety, fears laid off, all that good stuff, you know, got taken advantage of by corporate America and the church and people I loved and the list went on. And so in my opinion, I thought, well, I 
pretty much screwed up, you know, with all my decision making. And, and so deep down, I thought I was sort of a failure. And, you know, not only did I let the people I loved down and the people that looked up to me, you know, I grew up as a youth leader, you know, I was always in, in the leadership roles in student body, you know, I, I've always had that perception that I was good to go. But what they were didn't see was behind the scenes, there was so many struggles that I had. And so ultimately, I felt like I let myself down. And so that before, you know, I figured out who I was, I was really looking down on myself thinking that I couldn't make an impact on the world as much as I thought I would because of my life. Thanks for sharing that. And then I think that's something we all go through. You know, we, we kind of like sabotage ourselves, we punish ourselves because we've gone through like, you know, bad things, not realizing, you know, this is what can help people relate to you, have that vulnerability and learn that you can come out of it, you know, and what was that aha moment in your life when you realized, you know, it didn't matter what your past was, you can still go out there and be the person that you are today. Yeah, actually, there was a a young lady that I met through a women's Bible study. And I was sharing my testimony, just talking, you know, speaking from my heart, I wasn't even thinking of it as anything as that. And and, then she was in tears and, and told me with, like, just sincerity in her eyes, she said, you know, the world needs to hear the message that's inside of you. And she told me that I was beautiful inside and out. And she wasn't the only one that told me that before. And then she was one of many that told me this. And so that particular night, it probably happened, was it a couple of years ago, I think, I started to deal with myself and started looking internally and just had like a self-reflection, you know, just really looking at my life. I was 30 at that point. And, you know, I had to really deal with my insecurities and fears. And, you know, why was it that I was ashamed of my life and decisions that I have made? You know, why could I embrace that I'm human and it's okay? And that everybody had different journeys. And this particularly was my journey. And I had to embrace my experience and understand that it doesn't change who I am or what the impact I can make. And so when I finally looked within and really saw me and how beautiful I really was and how strong I was and how relentless I was, that's when things started changing. Thanks for sharing that. You know, and it's it's amazing how, you know, especially as, as Asian women, we're so, you know, hard on ourselves when we make a mistake, not realizing, mm-hmm. you know, making mistakes is part of the process and it's fine. And when we can learn to let go of that process, I mean, that's when we can just be fully ourselves and just go out there and do what, what we want to do. And, you know, because of your realizations, what's your life been like now? Oh, it's been a whirlwind. I have got, had so many opportunities presented to myself, you know, to share my story. You know, I got laid off in August 2014, not because of anything in my performance, but because I exceeded my goals. And I basically at that time, you know, I was encouraged to write a book by a publisher that I met at a random event. And so I wrote a book and I ended up becoming published by a, you know, the largest Christian publisher in the world, actually. And so I wrote a book and now my books are all over the world. I mean, they're in Canada, London, it's it's even in Walmart, Barnes and Noble. It's fantastic. I, I couldn't believe it. And the book is called The Ugly Side of Sales. And from that, I was able to be able to share my story at, you know, different radio shows and different public events and things like that. And I was even on a a couple, uh, I guess, radio shows as far as not shows, but actual, I don't know what you call them, but events where I was working with Star Jones and Stu Taylor. So it was fantastic. And then during that process, I was also encouraged to, you know, start my own business. And at this Point because of all the struggles I had in corporate America with people, you know, taking advantage of me and not giving me what's due and treating, you know, people wrong, that I decided to want to make an impact in the marketplace by helping the good guys win. So now I do consulting for businesses and only for businesses who are doing the right thing. I over the past eight years, I've helped businesses at employers and clients I've coached close over $500 million worth of business. And those are all doing the right thing, not, you know, cutting corners, not being a shark, but doing the right thing, but still getting the results you want. So that was great. I actually, and this is like fresh off the press. I actually, because I was working in corporate America, right? I started working just to kind of help pay with the bills. I actually turned in my notice, Sheena, this Friday 
to work full time for myself. And that was a really a step of faith and walking away from a six figure job. I just closed a multi million dollar business. My boss thought I was crazy. She was like, I can't believe you're walking away from all this money and to start working for yourself. And you don't even know what's going to happen. And you know, this is like a safety net. And I, was like, and I told him, I was like, look, I'm tired of playing safe. Like I'm ready to go out there and, and start doing stuff for myself. And so that's that. And I got, you know, awarded the National Association for Professional Women, Women of the Year last year, 2015 to 2016. And I'm also part of the John Maxwell team now. And my best thing about what I've happened since that aha moment is I've been able to impact the marketplace for the better. A lot of women and men come up to me and just tell me how I've inspired them to keep going in spite of what it looks. So to me to be able to give hope at a time where everybody is struggling, especially in the oil and gas market. I don't know if you guys know what's going on in Houston. There's a lot of layoffs during the oil and gas downturn. And so for the past two years, people were getting let go and their retirement plans and all these other things, their, their funds are dwindling down and they kind of lost hope and just being able to encourage them to start their own business and look at this storm as an opportunity to grow and, and also to do something they love. To me, that's the most rewarding thing is be able to push them and catapult them to the destiny that they want, regardless of how bad it looks and, and still have joy that everything is going to be okay. Awesome. Well, thanks for sharing that and congrats, you know, for, you know, quitting your job and just being able to work for yourself. And it's funny when, you know, when you tell people like you're, you're done and they're like, you're, you know, <laughs> they tell you, you must be nuts. I mean, yes. <laughs> you know, people don't realize like how much more opportunity opportunity there is out there. I always, you know, I remember my old boss, he would always tell me when one door closes, another one opens. And it's so true, right? And I think right. just people are too focused on that closed door, not realizing there's like 10 other doors that you could open out there. So I'm really glad that you're able to take that leap of faith and just go out there and believe in yourself that you have the ability to do it. And, you know, to the woman who's listening to your episode, she may be in her own journey of self-confidence. What would be that one tip you would give to her? Embrace the journey you're in. Remember, it's a process. You know, it's through the pressure that diamonds are made, right? Sometimes in life, we will have to go through the fire. But if you can handle the heat and be strong, no matter what, you know, sooner or later, that storm will pass and you'll come forth uh, more beautiful and stronger than ever. So shine, my fellow diamonds, you know, you're brilliant and that somebody would have to put their stunner shades on. You know, I keep believing, don't give up, keep pressing forward. I, I'm so glad. I never gave up. And I can tell you this, that I didn't have anybody to say, don't give up, you know, keep going. It, I had to be my own cheerleader. I had to encourage myself. And, you know, in fact, I had more doubters than encouragers, right? So, you know, you're your number one cheerleader. And with God on your side, all things are possible. So keep going. Awesome and great tips. Thanks for sharing that. And Edna, if our listeners wanted to get to know a little bit more about you and what you do, is there any links or social media profiles we can connect with? Sure. I am on Twitter. You'll find me as Edna Sangel. Instagram, it's highly favored Edna. And I also have my website, www.favorandwealth.com, which is my business website. But there's also, I have a blog on there as well. I have a couple of blogs, The Diary of Virtuous Women, as well as Relentless Women of Zion. So, And I also have a YouTube channel. And I'm just, start, I'm just new to the social media deal. I just started doing this once I became a publisher. And a lot of people have been out there doing it for years and years. So I'm fairly new, but I'm so so excited to be able to um, to utilize these as, as methods to communicate inspiration and hope to people out there. So yeah, come connect with me in any of those areas. Awesome. Well, thanks for sharing that. And to our listeners, if you want to connect with Edna, you can also head on over to the TaoSelfConfidence.com and search for Edna's name. Her show notes will pop up along with everything else we talked about. And I just want to thank Edna for taking the time to share her story with us. So thank you so much. Thank you, Sheena. I really, really, I really enjoyed it. Thank you so much. Not a problem. It was an honor having you on the show. And to our listeners, be on the lookout for another new episode of Another Amazing Woman's Journey to Self-Confidence. And we'll talk to you soon. Bye for now. Thank you for tuning in to another amazing episode of the Tao of Self-Confidence. Want to learn how you can use podcasting to market your business? Download your free report by visiting our website at thetowofselfconfidence.com. Your inner journey to self-confidence awaits.